So we've gotten a lot of requests for cold air intakes. Um, a lot of our competitors do it. Uh, it's something we're totally aware of. It's something we've, we've tested. Uh, I'm gonna explain how most people do it and why we went in a different direction. Um, really from an engineering standpoint, there's reasons that we did what we did. Uh, so, you know, the basic system is we've got exhaust coming in, we've got exhaust coming out. We've got air coming in here and then the air goes up and, and down to your throttle bodies. So the basic system that a lot of people would do would be just taking a piece of silicone, popping it on the end, having it come up. But the problem is if you're in really deep snow, that can get clogged. And putting a restriction on the front of the compressor is one of the worst things you can do for the efficiency of the turbo and the turbo system. So we spend a lot of time on the system trying to always get the, every efficiency, no matter where it is, whether it's, it's this bend right here that it's not a 90, it's not a 45, it's a nice gradual sweep. So anything that we can do, you know, having the, the exhaust come straight out and trying to keep the exhaust coming in, you know, is all for system efficiency because we want there to be a balance between manifold pressure and exhaust back pressure. They need to be in line with what the manufacturer has. So that way your pipe tune, your port timing, all that still stays as the factory did it. All we're doing is then raising all of those pressures, but relative to each other, they stay the same. If you put vacuum on the intake of a turbo, the turbo will still make the boost that you've asked it to make. That's the beauty of a turbine over, say, like a supercharger. But what happens is the turbine has to work harder. And in order to work harder and produce more energy, it has to create more back pressure in the exhaust. At that point, our two pressures, manifold and exhaust, will get out of whack because we have an increase in exhaust back pressure, yet our manifold pressure is going to stay the same. This ruins the volumetric efficiency of the engine. This is why we work so hard to avoid this. The system that we've come up with, we've, we've kind of referred to it as a hybrid system. It is still maintaining the stock system as we know it. We've kind of perfected it with a shield that we'll show you. And then we also have a snorkel that can, can feed the system as well. Let me show you how that works. The first thing that we'd like to do is we'd like to compartmentalize the heat from the turbo versus the compressor side. With the thermal barrier installed, you can really see how we've made this into two compartments. We maintain all the pipe heat and the turbine heat here, and it's going to stay in this compartment. We've then got a, a compartment up here for the intake of the turbo. This thermal barrier alone would definitely increase performance and efficiency because it's going to only draw from the vents in this area. We believe in a lot of venting. There's plenty of venting on here, and you can see how the thermal barrier uses most of the venting, and then the bottom of it can allow the heat out for the turbo so that it doesn't have to get to the compressor. Now that we've got the compartment compartmentalized with the thermal barrier, you can see that this would actually work for most people. But in some snow conditions, especially our Canadian customers, we went ahead and now we have a port and this port then feeds into the cold air section of the compartment. On this port, we can install what looks like a typical snorkel. Although it's not hooked up to the compressor, it's hooked up to the compartment. So if all of this gets covered in snow, we can pull from here. Or vice versa. If this gets covered in snow and the back of this stays open, then the turbo will pull from there. The most important thing here is we've given the turbo options to pull from. We've designed our filter with basically a spring on the inside, it's a very open spring, so that when you're in the trees, it can bounce around and not get ripped off of the sled. And also, the bouncing around action will help clear it off. The filter itself is sized at five times the area that we need to feed the turbo. So we could have the whole front part of this iced over and we can still breathe from the back. In the past, we've had uh, dealers use aerochargers on some other applications. And I remember uh, a very well-known racer talking about when he first hooked it up, he could actually see the hood sucking in from the vacuum. And that's one of the reasons we're, we're, we're really against having just a snorkel attached to the turbo. We, we want the turbo to be able to breathe and have lots of options. 
And then you look at the math behind it. What, what, what does this mean? Well, the simple math is if you had two pounds of vacuum on the front of this compressor, which wouldn't be that much, it, you wouldn't see a lot of body flex with just two pounds. When you take into consideration the additional exhaust back pressure, that means with two pounds of vacuum, you'd have 239 horsepower at eight pounds of boost. With our system, you're going to go from 239 to 256 and have a more consistent running snowmobile. So this system's available. It's not uh, included in the kits. And for the right customer that needs this and is in that deep, heavy snow, this will give you zero vacuum on the compressor. You'll maintain good performance day in and day out. And come springtime, you could remove, say, the snorkel if you're in hard packed snow. Um, if you're a guy that prefers to have the snorkel a little higher, say you're running a, uh, a big snow plow from BRP, it'd be very simple. It's modular. You could just put the filter wherever you need it.